Now, our next guest is Marcin Michalski, Beam Server Poland. He will tell us how to manage Beam content. This will be a perspective strictly from the supplier of IT solutions. This of the InfraBeam conference. During the previous speeches, you had the occasion to listen about Beam content. At this one, I would like to put a bit more light on the topic of BAM content management. My name is Marcin Michalski, and I'm one of the co-founders of a company called Sagiton, which is a software house from Wrocław. And due to the fact that since 2015, we've been working on a BAM content management solution called BAM Streamer, I decided to share with you some information about who and why needs to manage the BAM libraries, what are the most common errors and anti-patterns that might arise during the content management and how to manage the content properly, of course. So let's start with the basics. Who needs to manage the BIM content? Well, the answer is pretty simple. Those that have them. Who has the BIM libraries? Of course, manufacturers, but also wholesalers, which might be quite surprising for you. But there are also other companies which has their own BIM libraries, which are being used within their internal projects. I'm, of course, referring to design and the construction firms. So why? Why these companies need to manage the BIM content? Take the manufacturer example at the very beginning. Let's refer to the AliAxis case. AliAxis needs to outreach the designers with their BIM libraries. You need to understand that AliAxis is an international manufacturer, and as a result, they need to adapt BIM content to specific region. And to do that, they need to address different aspects, like different product variants, different set of attributes that needs to be provided within the content, not mentioning the fact of the different languages, legal regulation, or local standards and classifications. At the very end, you also need to understand the fact that products of AliAxis and another manufacturer as well evolves due to some technical or legal changes. And with the evolution of the product, the content and the corresponding information also changes. However, it could be the case that someone could actually bought some older product of, of the manufacturer and as a result, the manufacturer should also be able to give the historical version of the BIM libraries as well. So if you take all of this factor under considerations, multiply that by the number of products that particular manufacturer like Aliaxis might have, you're ending up with hundreds of thousands of possible variations. But you also need to understand one thing. AliAxis is not just a single brand. It's a group of different brands around the world. So this number is getting even more higher. So if I were a global BIM manager of AliAxis like Rafael Mus, and someone told me to manage the BIM content manually, well, probably I would went mad. But what about the other group? Let's focus on the construction and design firms. If they have their own library, they most likely keep it into some storage, into some shared storage net drive. And from this storage, different teams can collect the libraries and use them within their projects. However, these projects might have a different requirements, different, they might be on a different stage of development. So most likely, this designer needs to modify these libraries a bit, also improving them from time to time. And let's say that you're also a BIM content manager in that kind of firm, and you've been asked to collect all the local copies from all the possible projects which were executed within your organization, merge it back together and put it into the net drive. To be honest, I wouldn't like to be that person and I'm guessing you aren't, you neither. So many firms already spotted that there is a huge necessity of managing the content. But alongside this knowledge, there are also lots of errors that were introduced in the process of the proper content management. And I would like to cover most obvious one and share it with you. First of all, don't exchange the content e through the email. Every time you're sending it from one email to another, you create a, a, an independent local copy of it. 
The other thing is the information inside the content. Since different projects might have a different requirements, the same refers to the data inside the content. So it's very likely that if you would like to address all possible requirements of all possible cases that might arise within any of your projects, you'll probably need to put a bunch of information inside the content. And when someone actually takes that from this shared drive, they most likely remove 90%, if not more, of them at the very beginning. It's quite ridiculous, isn't it? The other thing is the way how you're actually providing the BIM content information inside the, the libraries. Probably you're doing that manually. And like with any other manual activities, it's pretty much human error prone. You also need to understand one thing. Your content is offline. So whenever you change something within your content, this change doesn't get propagated. Either you change that in the central repository or within your local file. This modification stays only there. And last but not least is that since you're most likely creating your content manually, you don't have an automated way to validate both the data and the geometry of the content, making it pretty buggy or increasing the possibility of potential bugs inside your libraries. So how we can address that properly? First of all, we believe that we need to separate the product information from the geometry and merge them dynamically, generating independent BIM files for specific project needs. During this generation, we can also perform the automated check of both the data and the geometry to reduce the number of potential errors within our libraries. Once we have them generated and validated, we can create a new version and send it back to our teammates within a different projects. What does that give us? First of all, we have a single source of truth for our BIM content. Our content is not offline anymore. It's online, it's connected, connected with our repository. So whenever we change something in our repository, this modification gets propagated to all the places where our content is actually being used. The other thing is the easy access. The easy access allows you to access the content in a very convenient way. From the manufacturer perspective, I think the most convenient way to achieve that is by offering the designer a web page. But from the construction firm perspective, that would most likely be some BIM add-on, like for instance, plugin for Revit. Since we're generating the content automatically, we can also automatically update the product information. What does that give us? We can provide content with the information specific for the project requirements. Moreover, we can provide the information specific to the stage of the development of particular projects. So at the very beginning, we probably need to provide a very low level of information which contains only basic attributes. But alongside the evolution of the project, the number of attributes which are relevant may increase. But since we have a content management solution, we can dynamically add new attribute to our project libraries. And last but not least is the data and geometry validation. We wanted to reduce to minimum the possibilities of having any errors and bugs within our content. And if we're introducing the automated way of validating that, this is the way how it should be done properly. We believe that the content management is getting more and more popular nowadays. That's why we started collaboration with technical universities across the Europe and we'll already see the results. One of the diploma thesis that was using Beam Streamer uh, with, uh, that was using Beam Streamer platform was awarded as the most innovative diploma thesis at the Technical University of Poznan. The promoter of this thesis is Professor Adam Glema, who is also one of the speakers at this conference. So if you're interested in getting more about the content management, I definitely recommend you to check our site, beamstreamer.com, where under the knowledge section, you can see the recording from our webinars that covers different aspects of content management. And in case you would like to catch up with me, just take a screenshot of this slide and send me an email after the conference. Thank you for your attention and see you at the discussion panel. 
Dziękuję bardzo, panie Marcinie. Wie... Thank you very much, Marcin. We know now how to manage beam content.